Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Friends You Can Grow With podcast. I'm Casey Placencia. I'm Matt Nespri. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm really hurt. They forgot my name. <laughs> I forgot that. Okay. Okay, y'all good? I'm great. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Friends You Can Grow With podcast. I'm Casey Placencia. I'm Matt Nespri. And we're back with Billy Hunt talking about hearing the voice of God. Yeah, so this is session four, our last session, Mm -hmm. and we're going to be talking about something that we've hinted on every session, and that is journaling. Journaling, yes, and we're going to talk to you about a specific way to journal that will really help you hear the the voice of God, and it's called SOAP. SOAP. Yeah, S-O-A-P. S-O-A-P. And each of those letters stands for something. Okay. And um, so... uh, before we get to that, when you get ready to journal, mm-hmm. uh, there's just a few things you need to you need to bring a good pen. Mm-hmm. You need to have a, a little journal to write in, and I and I like a separate little journal to write mm-hmm. notes in. That are either be if you don't mind tearing out of your journal, you can do mm-hmm. that for things that distract you that you want to write down. Hmm. And um and and then you need a, a certain place and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to talk about this. Uh, what SOAP is. Now, S-O-A-P stands for, the S is for scripture, mm-hmm. the O is for observation, mm-hmm. the the P, uh, the A is for application, and the P is for prayer. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about each one of those things. Mm-hmm. So as we're talking about hearing the voice of God, <clears throat> how does that play into now I'm writing? What is the relationship between hearing and writing well normally when you journal you just write about all sorts of things you know i have tons of journals where sitting before the lord i wrote down what was troubling me and Mm -hmm. i listened and i wrote down scriptures and that Mm -hmm. sort of thing but this is different this is a different type of journey and that the other type of journaling is really great because if you can get at what's troubling you on paper Mm -hmm. and then you can write down the scriptures it really will build your faith to believe god to change whatever that situation is Mm -hmm. and he always did for me he he always has done that for me but this is a little different this is a type of journaling that we do with a a daily bible reading plan Mm -hmm. if you read with us through bible 365 Mm-hmm. And there's the Devo that Pastor does every day. Actually, he uses this method. Mm-hmm. And you can, as you read his D- Devo, you can see that yeah. he's used this method because it's, well, it's it's obvious. And you'll be able to do the very same thing mm-hmm. that he does, only it'll be different scriptures because the Lord speaks different things to each one of us based on mm-hmm. where we are and what our needs are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, let's begin. The Let's first of all talk about the, the first one, this, the S, is the scripture. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, if we read one Old Testament scripture, one New Testament scripture, one proverb, and one psalm, that's a lot of reading, mm-hmm. and it's not talking about writing all that down. But if you read slowly, then ask the Lord to cause a particular scripture somewhere in that reading to speak to you. Mm-hmm. Where if, if it's in the Old Testament portion that we're reading that we've been reading about hezekiah so um maybe if something about hezekiah that really spoke to you maybe where if you're struggling with sickness where he turned his face to the wall and he asked the lord to give him more time Mm -hmm. and the lord extended his days well that would be something that would speak to you if you were trying to believe god for healing well that would be the scripture you would write that down by S, you would write down that. Mm-hmm. And you date it, of course. You date the date that you're doing this. Mm-hmm. You write that down. Well, the next one is O for observation. Mm-hmm. So what? then you look at that scripture and you say, really, what is this scripture saying? What is this scripture saying to me? Mm-hmm. And, you know, what is it saying overall? I went through uh, mine. In fact, I, I meant to uh, dig it out. It, it might be in my bag i'll look in a minute Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, i had some that i had done where i could have given you some examples Mm -hmm. but it talks you know whatever kind of a description uh, uh, an overall look at that scripture observation Mm -hmm. of that scripture so in that scripture with hezekiah you would observe that god is going to heal him Mm -hmm. that he's that god can change your destiny Uh, he Mm -hmm. felt he'd been told Actually, a prophet told him he was going to die. Mm-hmm. So you could say, well, God told me I'm going to die, so that's it. But he turned his face to the wall, and he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord extended his life. Mm-hmm. And so that, those are observations. Well, then then the 
Then you have the A, S O A. The A is for application. Mm -hmm. So I'm sick and I need to be healed. So my application is, Lord, I'm calling unto you also as you healed Hezekiah. Would you heal me also? I I know you can heal me also. Then the P is for prayer. So Mm -hmm. you pray and you ask the Lord to heal you. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. And whatever you're reading, and if you'll talk among yourselves, I'll see if my my, uh, journal is in my purse here so I can. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, we can talk because Casey, I know that you have mentioned that you keep a journal. You like journaling. Mm -hmm. Is this something you do or if not, kind of what is your journaling experience? So um, I always grew up in church. I'm from Alabama. So back in our church in Alabama, our pastor always talked about soap. So Mm. we would, every time we would have, you know, 21 days of fasting or when we would go um, on our summer camp trips, all of our devotion devotionals would have soap. Mm -hmm. So I've always grown up doing soap and I still apply it to this day. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, it's a great method. Honestly, it's, it really helps break down the scripture Mm -hmm. and actually get your application out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And in the inverse, I had never heard of soap <laughs> until I came here, which is weird growing up in church. Well, I hadn't either. I, I only um, heard of it a few years ago. Yeah. And I, you know, what in the world are they talking? Soap? What are they talking about? <laughs> I mean, about? I shower often enough, <laughs> yeah. but this is not that. This is. And I know yeah. that's the washing of the water of the word. But right. <laughs> Ephes- that's in Ephesians. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so you have your journal out, which I'm excited to see. Um, so maybe give us an example. Well, this was in January 27th of 2019. Mm-hmm. I just opened it. And this is Psalms 27, 14 was the scripture that day that stood out to me. And it says, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was the scripture. The observation was David started this Psalm with a declaration of faith. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And why should I be afraid? He then proceeded to talk about his enemies and and those that were against him. And I talk a little bit more about that. And then on the application, it's easy to get your eyes on trouble. But I must always wait and be strong in the Lord, remembering mm-hmm. that God always causes us to triumph. Hmm. Yeah. That's the that's the application. And the prayer is, Father, remind me to wait patiently for you. And wait for you to act. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it's a simple That's little good. procedure. And the one that I mentioned Moses, and, and here's the one on Moses. This is Deuteronomy. This was uh, uh, November the 30th, I mean, uh, December the 30th. Uh, Deuteronomy 34.10. And there was not, there has not arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And so the observation was, what a biography Moses has has born at a time when all male babies were condemned and hidden in an ark adopted by a princess banished as a murderer met god in the burning bush used by god to deliver israel but most important met with god face to face Mm -hmm. all of this yet he was just a man and often made mistakes but when he did he always turned to god that was Mm -hmm. my observation Mm -hmm. the application was all humans are flawed but all have Moses potential and even greater potential because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in in us. I may never see God face to face in this life, but I can see him spirit to spirit and heart to heart. Hmm. And then the, uh, the prayer, thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit to guide me, to teach me, help me Help me wait, listen, help me listen for your voice Mm -hmm. and order my life to be a blessing first to you and then to the world. Hmm. So, you know, that's, that's how you do. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And when we're looking for a verse to use for the soap method, what are some good kind of things to look for? You said one that maybe stands out or pops out to you in your daily reading. Is there like certain criteria you maybe look for or or go against? Like it would, I imagine, be hard to do a verse like Jesus wept, but maybe not. Man, you you know? do that, yeah. Especially um, if you're sad and crying. That's that true. Would pop yeah. Right yeah, out at you. I sit yeah. corrected. Um, but is there something you're looking for when you're looking for a scripture 
to do your soap method journaling on some criteria? Well, it works with any scripture, mm -hmm. but basically the person who's doing it, it's going to work according to where you are, what you need, mm -hmm. where your heart is. Yeah. Mm. So as you read, read slowly. If you're mm -hmm. going to just scan through it, skim through it, you're not going to find anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you read slowly, there will be, and sometimes there's more than one scripture. So mm -hmm. then you have to decide, okay, which one of these am I mm -hmm. going to use? But um, I normally highlight it in my, in, if, I'm in, if I'm using my Bible, I don't highlight it if I'm using my phone. Mm -hmm. But uh, you could, couldn't you? I don't know how to do that because you show me later how to highlight on my yes. phone. <laughs> but, but if I'm using my Bible, I highlight. And then I could go back and that scripture will always pop out at me. Hmm. I believe in writing in your Bible. Hmm. So I just think it depends on where you are, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that every day there will be a word for you yeah. if you look for it. And you try to maybe not take such a large chunk. Like you said, it was a one verse. We're not trying to do the soap method on like a whole chapter here. No, but when yeah. you're doing the observation, as I did with David, mm -hmm. in order for me to to understand what the Lord was saying to me, I had to go back and look at the fact that he was talking about, he was praying about, he was under attack and the, and the Lord, and the Lord was delivering him from his enemies. So if I had been in a position of somebody was attacking me, or mm -hmm. I felt like the enemy was attacking me, I would need to include enough of that. And the, the wonderful thing about it is these were, uh, these are a couple of years old because mm -hmm. I just flipped back to the back of, of my journal. And so these are a couple of years old, and yet they still speak to me. Mm -hmm. They still yeah. speak to yeah. me when I read them. Yeah, that's great. So we've picked our scripture, and now we move on to our observation. So let's, let's just say our scripture is Jesus wept. Why not? Why not? So when it comes to observation, I get the sense from what you're saying and what you've read that it's what is personal and what speaks to you, correct? Yeah, but uh, observation also is, where does this fit in scripture? Hmm. And and what is the context of this scripture? Mm -hmm. And and what is the scripture say? And in that context, that particular scripture was where his good friend had died. Mm -hmm. And even though he knew he was about to raise him from the dead, hmm. he had, he still had died and he was feeling, he was feeling pain in his heart about that and mm -hmm. he wept. Mm -hmm. And and so you know I think probably my observation would be that Lazarus has died, and uh, Jesus purposely waited because his intention was to raise him from the dead as an example of the glory of God, mm -hmm. and so uh, but he still felt even even though he knew what he was going to do he still wept mm -hmm. because he loved his friend and his friend went through death mm -hmm. and he was feeling that for him yeah, yeah. so. So that would be an example of like a good observation. Mm -hmm. A bad one would be like if I take that and make it about like something that's completely out of context. Mm -hmm. Like let's yeah. say our, if our scripture we're going with is Jesus wept. If my observation is, well, if Jesus wept, people who don't weep aren't godly would be like a bad. <laughs> yeah, but, that's, so, yeah, but, but the, some people would do that. Yeah. Right. So the point of that is that observation, as you say, kind of keeps it in context and kind of draws a little bit of meaning out of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you go to the next one, application. Mm -hmm. Now, the, and the, the observation is how does this fit in scripture? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, what was going on around? What are the verses before and after say? Mm -hmm. And that would tell me to place this in the right place. Because when you're confessing scripture, mm -hmm. you want to keep it in context as yeah. much as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, there are times when I think I quoted in our last session, Nahum 1 9, mm -hmm. uh, well, where it would appear that I had taken that out of context because they were talking about being invaded by an army mm -hmm. and I'm talking about being invaded invaded by by sickness mm -hmm. yeah but it wasn't out of context because it was a prophetic word yeah. mm -hmm. and so it could have a practical meaning and that yeah. was practical to me but in the case where you're where you're doing this you in the observation part you're going to have an application part mm -hmm. but in the observation part you want to keep it in context so that so that anybody who reads it will understand mm -hmm. how it fit in the scripture. Mm -hmm. it's a, we're back to Habakkuk. Yeah. yeah, keep it plain. Yeah, yeah, make it plain so that anybody can read it. Yeah. But the next part where you apply it, then how does that scripture speak to you personally? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sad. I, I've been weeping. I've had loss in my life. Uh, maybe I've lost a loved one. 
And I see that Jesus was even moved. And he was sad also when he mm -hmm. lost a friend, even though he knew hmm. yeah. he was about to raise him from the dead. Yeah. So even though I know I'm going to see my loved one again, even though I know this is not final, then I, then I can trust God that I will meet them again in the resurrection mm -hmm. with Jesus. Yeah. So that's how the application would go. Yeah. It seems with each one of these steps in the SOAP method, you're taking a scripture and you're making it more and more personal yeah. to you. Yeah. Which I think some Christians tend to go the opposite route where we could take a scripture and make it more about them. Yeah. Um, but I like that you're saying an at, you go from the scripture to the observation and then your application is how that personally affects you mm -hmm. and kind of some tangible things that you can do with it. And and that's really God's voice to you. Mm -hmm. That's God speaking to you from that scripture. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very practical way for you to begin to learn to hear the voice of God, mm -hmm. especially that the P is for prayer, yeah. mm. where you actually say, Lord, I see this in scripture. I see this is what you want to do for me. And I, I believe you. I trust you, mm -hmm. Lord. And so then you begin to pray it back to the Lord and it becomes very real to you. Hmm. It's, a, it's just a really great method. Yeah. yeah. So cool. let's finish it out with that scripture. We've, we've picked the scripture, Jesus wept. You did your observation, your application. Give us kind of a, what would a prayer that we could come away from that look like? Okay. And we, we wrote it as though it was a person who'd gone through a loss mm -hmm. that was writing it. Yeah. So, so we would pray something like, Father, I thank you that you know my heart. You yourself wept, so you know how I feel. You mm -hmm. felt sorrow, so you know the sorrow I feel. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord, that you also bore my grief. Mm -hmm. So you're going to lift this off of me. I have hope. I will see my loved one again. And, and the joy of the Lord will replace this heaviness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's a great example. Yeah. And you said you like to date them. You like to go back. How often do you go back and, and read, not read them? Not often. Yeah. Not really not often. Probably the, the journals I go back not are not soap uh, journals, but I've gone back several times to read, especially I went back and, and read. My daughter is in her 40s. Mm -hmm. She probably wouldn't want me to tell you that, but she, <laughs> she's in her 40s. Did you say 20s? Yeah, she's 20s. 24. <laughs> I said 24. 24. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I went back and I read some of the journals that I wrote in when she was a teenager mm -hmm. and when she was going through some difficult times in her mm -hmm. life and what I asked the Lord to do. And, and then I, I could see where he did it, mm. you know, and really with Habakkuk, when we were talking about Habakkuk and him going to his watch place and listening to hear what God would say and writing the vision and making it clear. One of the greatest benefits is you can go back and read through those journals and a lot of people say, can I read your journals? The answer is no, mm. because most of what I write in, in my journal, not the soap necessarily, but in just my regular mm -hmm. life, I call them life journals. Mm -hmm. uh, in those life journals, I see what I was going through, what I prayed, the yeah. scripture I was standing on. And then I could go back and say, ha, God did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. God did it. Yeah. Casey, what about in your experience? You said that you have done the SOAP method mm -hmm. for some time now. What has been your kind of experience with doing that? Yeah, I feel like I've definitely, I've like, I dive deeper when mm -hmm. I do SOAP. Um, sometimes I don't do it like today during staff prayer. I didn't necessarily do SOAP, but I do still pick out some mm -hmm. observations of, oh, this is what the context is. This is how it applies to me. I'll do the OA part. Um, mm -hmm. But then I really just sit and, and think and pray about it. But I don't know. I feel like journaling, just writing down your thoughts really helps just process a lot of things. Because mm -hmm. if you keep it all in, I'm, it'll eventually break you. Mm. So praying, praying it out, writing it out, I feel like definitely is a good thing yeah yeah and i feel like it goes kind of hand in hand with what we talked about a little bit in the last session meditating yeah. or maybe session two um where we talked about meditating this is just another way to meditate on mm. a specific scripture yeah um and really kind of digest it and get the fullness out mm -hmm. of it 
And really, I have found that the scriptures that I that I do this process with stay with me. Mm-hmm. They'll stay with me, and I'll and I'll think about them, and I'll med- and I'll meditate on them. And so it's just it's a really good method. It's mm-hmm. a very it's not the only method. And as I said, I use more than one method. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I use the life journal. This is called a life journal, but but my life journal is not a soap journal. It's yeah. where it's a life experience journal with yeah. scriptures. Mm-hmm where I've had needs and I've asked the Lord to meet those needs and I've listened for him to speak to me. Yeah. Cause you said you had learned about this method not very long ago, you said, or no, no, since I've been here. Yeah. So how would you say maybe your scripture journaling has changed since you, have you noticed any changes since you've started doing the soap method? I really like the soap method, and mm-hmm. unless I have a specific need that I need to talk to the Lord about and I, and I need to meditate on, I, the Lord has blessed me so much that I haven't had any horrible crisis in a very long time. Mm-hmm. And it's usually those times of crisis that the that the life journals help you because mm-hmm. they for, they get it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. they yeah. get the, and you know you Definitely. really get out exactly what you're feeling and mm-hmm. exactly what you're praying mm-hmm. and what you need the Lord to work with you in. Yeah. But this now this will do it too. But this is using specific daily scriptures to find yeah. a thought. Yeah. Where the life journal, the Holy Spirit will bring up scripture, mm. and then you go back and you examine and yeah. you, and mm-hmm. and I probably I do that more than the average person would do it because I am a Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I yeah. stay in the word a little more than yeah. the average person. Yeah. This is something that's made to be used kind of in tandem with a daily Bible reading. Yeah. 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 And you know, if there's anything we really push here, and I know some people think, well, why do you do that? Because every person needs to be in the word mm. and you need a specific reading plan. If you don't have a plan, you'll get the point and what do you, what do you call it? The Bible roulette. Bible, Bible roulette yeah. 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 does not work. I, yeah. You know, you cannot have an overpowering Christian experience with Bible roulette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if Absolutely. you have a specific plan, whether it's a one year Bible or it's the 365 plan, we like to do the 365 because we all do it together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're on the same page. Yeah. So the Lord can speak to all of us. Mm-hmm. And it's really exciting. We experience that in our in our staff prayers mm-hmm. where we're praying the same thing. Yeah. And we're agreeing together and there's a large group of us. And it really, the glory of the Lord is revealed to us. Mm-hmm. And so that's the main reason. I, I know mm-hmm. some people don't understand. Well, we don't understand why you want us to read 365. Well, for one, it'll balance you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it's a balanced reading yeah. plan. But secondly, it keeps us all together. It keeps us united and it keeps a, a unity factor going in our church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just a good thing. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, so when you're doing a soap method, do you, I'm trying to think of how to word this. Are you trying to go for a certain length? Are you trying to make it a certain format other than soap? You know what I mean? Are you wanting, I want to write a page observation. I want to write. Is it a certain thing? Well, you're actually, to hit? it's it's just um, the pages. I just do one page, mm-hmm. and for a Bible teacher, that's something to just, just yeah. do one page. Yeah, but it, it's short. Keep it short. Yeah, and so uh, you can if now if it's something that it really speaks to you, then go sit down at your computer and let the Holy Spirit expand, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and He will He will expand on it. Yeah, because yeah. again, this is more of meditating. Yeah, on yeah. it. This is a daily devotion. Yeah. And I think that's something that we can lose sight of is that the Bible is meditation literature. Mm. It's not a chapter book, even though it has chapters and well, verses. Well, you look at it and it's thick and you think, oh, I wonder how long it'll take me to read this. Yes, you think yeah. it's a novel or a Yeah, challenge. I could read a 400-page novel in three days, but you know, I, I couldn't read this in three days. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like to read. <laughs> But really, this is something that I think can encourage us to read the Bible how it's meant to be read yeah. and digested, and that is slowly yeah. and you know meditated on yeah. and methodically. If you mm-hmm. can yeah. slow, keep it. You know, if if you skip around, if if you just or if you just read Proverbs and Psalms, you're going to miss. The great story, God's wonderful storyline of His love relationship with humanity. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the old, I love the Old Testament. I love it. I love all this wonderful story. And I really love the New Testament Mm -hmm. because it's about me. Mm -hmm. The Old Covenant is 
for an example to show me how to live the new testament is is powerful because that's where my power lies is yeah. in the new testament because it not only gives me examples but this gives me equipment gives me the weapons i need to mm-hmm. fight the good fight to have a successful life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you need it all yeah, yeah. And this method of journaling, or not this method, but this practice of journaling goes back to your favorite prophet, right? Mm-hmm. Habakkuk. Mr. Habakkuk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the book of Habakkuk, give us some insight into how that book kind of works out for him. Well, at the end, I, you know, he doesn't have the, the he, he doesn't say, and the, the war was over and everything was peaceful. He ends it. It, let me see if I can find it. Is it in the book? Is it in the Bible? <laughs> it should be in the book of Habakkuk. I, I think it should be. Yeah. I think it should be. Let me find it. Habakkuk, where are you? You should just flop right open. I, I, this is After my Nahum. fault. I shouldn't have just called on you to. It's okay. I, I it's, know a short, it's a short book. It's a short book, so it's, it's, a hard, it's hard to find. It's hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. It's a minor it's prophet. After, it's yeah. after Nahum. <laughs> yeah. No, that's Haggai. Is it after Haggai? Haggai, mm-hmm. Zephaniah, Haggai. No, it's before mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Zechariah, Malachi, Zephaniah, Haggai. There you go. There it is, Habakkuk. Okay. okay. I just wanted to read the last. <laughs> Cut out all of that stuff. No. Make it look like I just opened this Bible. You opened it straight. <laughs> you can leave it all in. I don't care. <laughs> so this is, what, this is how he ends the book. Though the fig tree may not blossom, and the fruit be no longer on the vine, Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the foal, and though there be no I, I, my glasses, I need my glasses, and though there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. <clears throat> the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk on the high places. Hmm. Wow. So no matter what happens, yeah. he came to the conclusion yeah. that no matter what was happening, you know, he said, Lord, why do the, why do the nations rage in the, yeah. in the first of it? That's he how said, he begins. Yeah. The book. Why, are, why are the nations yeah. raging? And, uh, and he said, you know, just uh, why is this all so terrible? Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, look among the nations and watch. He and be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days mm-hmm. which you would not believe, even if I told you. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And I, you know, I guess I like him so much because I can apply that to where we yeah. live. Mm-hmm. We see all around us. We see wars and rumors of wars. We mm-hmm. see economic situations, but God has not changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we can trust the Lord. And if everything fails, yeah, God will not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And what I love about that book is. That, as you said, the situation in Habakkuk doesn't necessarily change, but what changed his perspective was that he heard God's voice. He heard Mm -hmm. the voice of God. Yeah. And And he actually wrote down what God told him to write down. Yeah. 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 And now, thanks to him writing it down, we get to read it and benefit it. Yeah. Benefit from it and learn Learn. these great truths that you've taught us. Yeah. I've enjoyed being with you. Yeah. I've enjoyed it as yeah. well. I know that Isn't I've amazing? learned quite a bit and I am excited to see how my relationship grows yeah. as I put this into practice. And yeah, I definitely learned a lot from that book. It was my first time reading the whole book through and I I can definitely relate to him. And that, that was a great book. I loved it. Read Malachi. It's another minor, but he's, he's the last book in the mm-hmm. Old Testament. Mm-hmm. But his is really good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Billy, thank you so much. I have enjoyed our four-part conversation on hearing God's <laughs> voice. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I did. I, I did. know that you enjoy getting to teach others what you have learned and what God has given you mm-hmm. to teach others. So thank you so much for sharing this conversation with us. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>